In this video, I'm going to show you one of my favorite passing concepts from the bunch tied in in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, this is your first time visiting my channel. I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And the reason why I want to encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button is because it's going to allow you to be able to stay most up to date with the latest tips and strategies from both the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball as they come out and come available on my YouTube channel. It's completely free to subscribe. And like I said, it just allows you to know, you know, kind of what the latest tips and strategies are in the community. So hit that subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen if you're interested. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at something from the Gun Bunch tight end. The play we're going to be going over today is the inside switch. It's really one of the forgotten concepts of the bunch tight end. And I think it's honestly one of the more important plays that you can actually call. So we're going to dive deep into that here in just a moment. But before we do, I do want to let you know that I actually have a full offensive guide on the bunch tight end that is available for just $15 in the description. If you want to pick up that entire offensive scheme, that is going to be available for you in the description. It goes through everything about the bunch tight end and really gives you a great framework by which to run it as a full scheme, not just a money play here or there, but really kind of dives deep into how to actually run this as an, as an offense. So if you want to get that full guide, that's available in the description. It's helped a lot of people have a lot of success. Now the play inside switch, really simply here, we're going to basically smart route the square receiver. We're going to smart route the X receiver, as you can see right here. And then the next couple things here is really up to us. There's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different things that we can do. Personally, what I like to do the most is I like to go ahead and put the triangle receiver on a little flat route. Um, and then what I'm going to basically do is take that circle receiver and I can do one of about 15 different things. I could streak him. Okay, I could streak him if I wanted to. I could put him on a hitch route. I could put him on a slant. I could put him on a drag. I could put him on a, a zig. There's all kinds of things that I could do with the circle receiver that would actually make a lot of sense. But what I'm gonna start out with in this video is simply putting him on a hitch route, just like this right here. And then I'm going to motion the square receiver to the numbers and snap the ball. My first read is this running back every single time. I will force speed this route. This route to the running back is one of the most underrated routes in the entire game, at least in my opinion, this season. And the reason why it's so underrated is I don't think people quite understand exactly how to throw it. Now this square receiver is a great and very consistent read for you against man-to-man -man coverage, but please, please, please do not count out your tight end or your running back. Those are very powerful routes on the right-hand side of the field. You'll see here that against man-to-man -man coverage, that tight end will oftentimes get open Typically, it gets open a little bit more frequently in mutt than it does in regs, and the reason why is because your tight end in, in regs, uh, especially if you're using the Packers, is going to be Robert Tunyon. He doesn't quite have the route running, um, but if you were using like a Travis Kelsey or something like that or a George Kittle, um, this would be a very consistent read. But again, you'll see here that this square receiver does a really good job at getting open against man coverage. Now, another route that I want to talk about as far as man coverage goes is actually the circle receiver. Um, because he doesn't get jammed at the line of scrimmage, it actually gives you a pretty nice little opportunity here to just hit this guy quick. As you can see, it's a very quick little read. It's very similar to, I mean, it's almost a, very similar to like a tight end hitch route. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a very, very quick read, but it's a very effective read, to be honest. Um, right here, I'm going to go ahead and press coverage. I'm going to shade coverage down. And again, we're kind of anticipating that we're going to be facing a lot of nickel coverages because if they you know, go anything bigger than that, we're going to run on them all day. But as you can see, that little quick dot right there, little quick layup is wide open. That's, and, and let me just share with you here real quickly. What I'm doing on my coverage adjustments is I'm shading my coverage inside and I'm shading my coverage underneath. And what you're gonna notice is again, because he's in that kind of weird position where he can't get pressed, he's gonna get wide open every single time. And so that's one of the really, really uh, cool pieces of this. Now, one of the more popular defenses that a lot of people will run, especially against someone that is running bunch tight end, is they will run a Mabel defense like this right here. And what they'll do is they'll kind of drop this guy in the yellow zone because they're a little bit concerned that you might run a delay fade, for example. Well, that's the beauty of running this hitch route to that circle receiver. If there's no yellow zone on the left side, and even if there is, you're gonna have a nice little opportunity to hit this very consistently. Now, I actually in this video have my hook zones set to five yards. That's the best depth for defending hitches. If they don't have their hook zones set to five, um, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna reset my play here. And I'm gonna just kind of like do, I'm gonna try to get these, zone, these hook zones to play back to their normal depth here. Let's see if I can get that to work. 
But you see, see that right there? So they kind of back off. They kind of drop off of the hitch route if they're on a normal depth. So you're going to have a nice consistent read on that hitch against zone coverage, whether, you know, as long as they're not in something like this right here, which is a Tampa 2. So if, they're, if they have a yellow zone on that left side of the field, like on that bunch side of the field, and this is where people are just going to start to run out of adjustments, you are going to see that that yellow will take that away. But look at all this space that is wide open for that square receiver to be hit. It's a very consistent read, and it's very, very wide open in this example. Now, the next thing that you're going to probably see is you're going to see some type of, you know, 25-yard zone to try to take away this corner route. But what I want to show you really quickly is if they're not playing flat zones, you're taking that running back route all day long. That running back route is probably one of my favorite. Again, it's, it's, I think it's super, super underrated. Most people don't realize how good it is. And, you know, honestly, I think it's just because people haven't really – needed because of the, the amount of coverage defense we've been seeing this year most people haven't really mastered table routes but what you're going to see is if i throw this table route at the snap of the ball like if i just throw it quick and i can't get my animation there but i mean there, there you see that's the mabel coverage the beauty of that corner route is because it's oftentimes whenever you run bunch tight end you're going to want you're going to want to run your bunch like your three wide receivers to the left side of the field um or to the wide side of the field. And so that's gonna mean that your tight end route is running to the short side of the field, which as you saw right there, is actually a very good adjustment uh, for that route. Now again, this running back route is something that is, you know, it does take some practice, it does take some getting used to, but if you can learn how to hit this quick, you can kind of get up field really, really quickly with it. What I would recommend doing with that running back route is it, it, just going into practice mode a little bit and just kind of practicing it, um, testing it out against different, you know, different defenses and things like that. That would be kind of where I would start. But when you can really leverage the power of your running back route, um, your hitch route, your corner route, this play becomes very, very important in the big picture of the bunch tight end offensive scheme. And like I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to get my entire uh, gun bunch tight end offensive scheme, it is available in the description of this video for just 15 bucks. You are going to throw absolute lasers with this offense. This offense is incredible. It's very difficult to use or defend. It's very difficult to stop in general this year. It's probably the easiest offense to master, and it's probably, the honestly, the toughest to stop. So thanks for watching. And again, if you want to get my full gun bunch tight end offensive scheme, it is available for you in the description of this video.